they were uh, crack sealing that day. And the guy went, just missed the crew and went around them, and he kept going. And it wasn't a couple minutes later, there was a trooper that came by, and one of the guys was so mad that he almost got ran over, he, he flagged down the trooper, and they went and got the guy, actually. It's fine to zip through roadside construction if law enforcement is nowhere in sight. Valley News Team's Rositzkiewicz explains how in Minnesota, the people holding signs could wind up blowing the whistle on you. Rick Olson, a MnDOT worker, has had his share of close calls. We were working down by Alexandria and a semi ran into our whole crew on Highway 9 a few years ago. And the car came and almost ran me over. I've seen people reading the paper driving. I've seen a lady putting makeup on. But he says his job is about to get safer. Here on the Minnesota side, roadside flaggers have the ability to call in anyone who breaks the rules in areas of construction. A roadside flagger meaning anyone holding these stop and slow signs. Um, someone violates that direction, the flagger is able to take down the information and provide that information on the enforcement, and that's what that four-hour window is for. That's Ken Johnson speaking in St. Paul on Friday. Johnson tells us if law enforcement finds a person who's been reported within four hours, they can issue a $300 fine. It'd probably make them think next time when they're coming through a work zone. And it's not just construction workers who can call in these violations. Johnson tells us the new law was modeled after a similar one that's been in effect for school bus drivers. And according to the move over law, the same goes for passing a parked emergency vehicle. As for roadside flagger Rick Olson, he says now that he knows about this new law, he'll definitely use it. We have radios we could call the highway patrol and it'd be nice to find out why or, you know. Now I spoke with the Moorhead police as well as Minnesota State Highway Patrol on this. They say so far the program is so new, they really haven't received many calls yet. In Moorhead, Roseskivitz, Valley News Live. MnDOT says it's working on educating workers on how to report violations. It will include what to look for and how to take down license plate numbers. The state of Minnesota also says crews face the most severe weather in a decade this last winter. And to fight back the snow drifts, it cost nearly $133 million. The state's transportation department saw 31 snow events leading to an average statewide snowfall of more than 97 inches. Snowplow drivers put in more than 198,000 hours of overtime to keep roads clear. The workday is over and it's time to come up with a plan for the evening. With the weather we're experiencing, how about firing up the grill? Hutch is among friends from CashWise and he joins us live now from another backyard barbecue. Hutch, what's the weather like where you are? Just an absolutely gorgeous evening here in South Fargo. The clouds that have been lingering throughout the Southern Valley throughout the day have finally broken. We still have a little bit of a breeze and that northerly direction really cooling things off to a comfortable value here for a cashwise backyard barbecue. Let's take a look at what we have going on on the satellite and radar. Those clouds in the showers just now shifting into the Southern Valley. A few sprinkles showing up in Wilkin County and uh, those extend off to the east for Grant County. They're south of Elbow Lake and they're moving away from us to the south and to the east. Here's a look at your planner for this evening. Temperatures are going to be just awesome. We'll be dipping down through the 60s. The wind should be dying off once we get past sunset. And by bedtime tonight in Grand Forks, we will already be in the 50s. So that is a look at our forecast. Now I want to introduce you to tonight's winner of the Cashwise Backyard Barbecue. It's uh, the e Eagle. No, no, it's not the Eagle. <laughs> Leanne Tangan. Leanne, where did you sign up to win? And 52nd Avenue. I want to take this opportunity to tell you just what a fantastically beautiful yard you guys have. It's been a great place. You've been a great host. Yes, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah, who did you invite tonight? Well, I have two groups of neighbors over there, wave neighbors. Hi. There they are. I have Bob, and I have a daughter and her husband, and the kids left already. The kids have things to do, yeah. places to go, people yeah. to see, and I'm just having a grand old time in this backyard at the Backyard Barbecue. So right now we'll toss it back into the studio. There's plenty more things for me to uh, to keep me out of trouble here the next uh, half hour through the remainder of the show. For, t for now, we'll toss it back into the studio. Looks like you're having fun. Thanks, Hutch. A 22-year-old man is in jail tonight after stealing a car and crashing through a fence at Hector International Airport. Authorities say Andrew Brooke Hadley was spotted in the stolen car this morning and eluded officers several times when they tried to apprehend him. At one point, he took off along 19th Avenue North, and they say he drove over tire deflation device that was set up and then crashed through a fence onto airport property. 
He's expected to face several charges, including possession of a stolen car, criminal trespass, and preventing arrest. Moorhead police are looking for the three people behind a string of car break-ins, all caught on doorbell cameras. It happened last night in South Moorhead near Reinertson Elementary. Police say there were five car break-ins Tuesday night, and we talked with most of those victims today who say the car prowlers didn't get away with much, only taking about 20 bucks in change from one, while the other is only missing a couple packs of cigarettes. However, police say a name brand purse, wallet, a backpack, a passport, and an electronic device were all stolen from one of the other break-ins. They urge you to remember to take all your valuables out of your car every time you get out of it, and they remind you of the importance of locking your doors. In Bemidji, police are asking for your help locating a vehicle stolen from downtown Bemidji early this morning. It's a gray Ford Freestyle, similar to the one on your screen. It has Minnesota license plate 602 MCE. If you have any information about it, you're urged to call Bemidji Police. The phone number is right there on your screen, 218-333-9111. You never think it could happen here or happen to you, but an East Grand Forks woman, woman found out how easy it can be to lock a child inside a car on a hot day. Officers say she called 911 immediately and they were able to unlock the door quickly. The child was returned safely to her mother, but now police are asking parents to look before you lock. Illegal drug use and the spread of disease that goes along with it are prompting communities in our area to start syringe programs. One started this week in Valley City and Grand Forks is looking to do the same thing. Grand Forks' health department says from 2017 to 2018, hepatitis C cases jumped up 78%. Most of those cases come from injecting drugs. Most residents or some residents say that the move only enables drug users, but studies say syringe programs don't increase the use of illegal drugs, and users who go through the programs are five times more likely to enter treatment. Health workers say the program will also create new social supports for users. We really want the program to be an opportunity for an individual that may not have anywhere else to go to have somebody that they can build a positive relationship with. Residents of Grand Forks will have the opportunity to share their thoughts on the program. A community meeting to discuss the syringe program is scheduled for next Wednesday, August 14th. With summer coming to an end and the new school year on the horizon, students will need to be up to date on their vaccinations. To help, Fargo Cass Public Health is offering a back-to-school walk-in immunization clinic tomorrow. The clinic runs from noon to 6 p.m. Staff say no appointment is necessary, but you should bring your insurance information. Reduced rates are available for families who are uninsured or underinsured.